Listening to God's Word is an essential tool for your spiritual growth. We bring to you the simple but highly anointed message that guarantees absolute liberation from all oppressions of the devil and powerful impartation for all round lifting in life. Take a leap into a divine encounter as the anointed man of God takes you into an adventure of a lifetime. God bless you as you listen. God told me at the beginning of this year, precisely January 1st, that this year is going to be a year of enviable job. And we are all living witnesses how God has been giving people miracle jobs ever since I came. It has been commotion of miracle job one after the other. And while I was seated, you know what the Holy Ghost told me? He said, every week shall be a miracle job banquet week. Yeah. I thought somebody said saying a lot of amen to that. Yeah. Meaning that no week we go by without somebody receiving a miracle job. Yeah. No week we go by without somebody having testimony of a miracle job. Yeah. See all the testimonies today. Miracle job, miracle job. Somebody was called after the service yesterday, I mean, last Sunday. After the service last Sunday, what about your jump hunt? You say, I'm still there. It's okay, hunt no more. You say, I'm still there hunting. You say, hunt no more. Tomorrow, resume in my office. We'll pay you a certain amount for the start, and then we'll see where we'll go from there. Everyone online for miracle job, as the Lord lives, whose I am and whom I serve, the God of my Father, this coming Sunday, you are returning with your testimony of miracle job. God is not a man that I should lie. He told me January 1st. That this year shall be a year of enviable job. Therefore, everyone on the line for miracle job, everyone on the line for change of job, this week you are supernaturally settled. Yeah. Job without protocol shall be given to you. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, yeah. job without protocol shall be given to you. Yeah. That testifier, that was no application letter. There was no interview. Maybe interview has been the blockage between you and your miracle job. But as the Lord live this week, job without interview will be given to you. Amen. If you are the one, let your man be the loudest. Amen. Job without protocol will be given to you. Amen. That interview shall be turned to interaction. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Give the Lord a big clap of one more time. It's worthy. Hallelujah. Divine guidance, gateway to a world of exploit. That's our prophetic focus for the month of May. And we'll continue our teaching series engaging the breakthrough power of divine guidance. And today is a part two, and this service part two A. Engaging the breakthrough power of divine guidance. Today is also our turnaround banquet service and our monthly special anointing service. And in the name of Jesus Christ, every area of your life that you desire a turn. That shall be a supernatural, instant, forceful turnaround for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Engaging the breakthrough power of divine guidance. 
Divine guidance talks about God's guidance. It talks about guidance from the law. There is human guidance, which was depicted to us a while ago by drama unit. How people told him, oh, you are a lawyer. Oh, you are a born lawyer. Oh, see that powerful speech? I've never had it before. And as a result, you are a lawyer. If the whole world gather to confirm you to be what God has not ordained or called you for to be, you will fail. And that was the case of the lawyer. But that won't be your case in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and afterwards, they started mocking him. They did not ever told him. They said, we want him, we want him. Meanwhile, we all know that it was a lie. They never want him. That is human being for you. And when the life of this lawyer became miserable, he ran back to them for help. They deserted him. This is one of the reasons why you must seek the guidance of God in anything you do, particularly in your career and on all issues that has to do with your life and destiny. Divine guidance. So there is human guidance. There is self-guidance. Where you put fat and figures together. Where you put analysis. Mental reasoning. And you hear people say, all things being equal, this will be the result. This is what will happen. All things being equal. But all things cannot always and will never always be equal. That's why the Bible is speaking in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 12. There is a way that seemeth right. But the end thereof is a way of destruction. That is a way that he met right. That is a way that he met right. This is one of the reasons why you must get it right from the beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for someone here, you will not miss it in life. Amen. I can hear your Lord, amen. amen. You will not miss it in life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And everyone taking step towards the wrong direction. Grace. So retract your steps. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. But why do I need divine guidance? Why divine guidance? Number one, you need it for speed. Good speed. Unusual speed in your journey through life. In Genesis chapter 24, beginning from verse 1, we saw the story of Abraham sending one of his servants to go get a wife for his son Isaac. And he put the man under an oath to get a wife from a certain place and a certain people. A people that he has never met before in his life. And when the man was going in verse 12, he prayed one prayer. Oh Lord. He said, and he said, Oh Lord God of my father, my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed. Send me good speed these days. Send me good speed this day. And you know the rest of the story? How God led him, how God guided him, to the right place and the right people. And look at what happened in verse 27. Verse 27 of it, the man said, verse 27, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my, of my master Abraham, who had not left the to my master of his mercy and his truth. I, being in the way, the Lord led me. The Lord led me. The Lord led me. He did not use GPS. 
No. GPS can take you to the wrong road and the wrong route and the very long one. And you find it difficult to arrive at your destination. Praise the Lord. If you miss the road, the GPS will tell you to keep going and uh, go and turn somewhere instead of turning back. Amen. I invited one of my guys to move me when I was in Abuja. And I was trying to describe to the man, I said, no, that GPS. Okay, no problem. So he used GPS. It was time for lecture, he was not around. We called him, he said he was on his way. Okay, sir, where are you? Praise God. He couldn't describe where he was. And uh, what about the GPS? <laughs> the GPS was there, but he missed his way. There is no modern technology that can substitute divine guidance. That is why we must seek to get it. Now, this man was led by God, and he enjoyed good speed with precision. So we need divine guidance to enjoy speed in the journey of life. And when God leads, he clears obstacles. And when obstacles are off your way, you enjoy the smooth ride. You enjoy a smooth ride. You enjoy a smooth ride. You know, there is a, a, a road I hate traveling on. And anytime I'm going to my village, my hometown, I can't escape it. Except I go to pass through a very long road. Why did I hate that place? Because bombs. In places where there are supposed to be bombs, in places where there are not supposed to be bombs, on Federal Road. Places that are not even near town, no activity, no school, no nothing, no house. You will still be climbing bombs. So I get tired traveling on that road. He said, when God leads a man, he clears every bomb on the journey of life for that man. And that was what the children of Israel enjoyed in Psalm 114, verse 3, all through to 7. He led them, verse 1, verse 2, and then in verse 3, the sea saw them and clear off. Jordan was driven back. Mountains saw them and skipped like ram, and then little hill like lamb. And he said, what a led thou? What did you see, mountain?" What did you see, Jordan, that you were driven back? What did you see, mountain, that thou skipped like ram? And in verse 7, tremble thou at, tremble thou art at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. So God was with them, and all obstacles on their way clear. So every time you are being led by God, obstacles are cleared, and what, when obstacles are cleared, you enjoy smooth ride, you enjoy speed. Therefore, I speak and prophesy speed into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed into your career in the name of Jesus. Speed into your business in the name of Jesus. Speed in every area you turn in the name of Jesus Christ. No more slow movement around you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Why do I need divine guidance? Number two, you need divine guidance for divine protection. Psalm 105, verse 13, all to 15. When they went from one nation to another, and from one kingdom to another, from one people to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved king for their sake. Say, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. They went from one nation to another. God was with them. He suffered no man to do them any wrong. You see, you can't do anything against a man that is being led by God. You cannot. You can only do for. Because whatsoever you do against a man that is being led by God will be turned to his good. For all things work together for good. You can't do anything against a man that is being led by God. That is why we need divine guidance. Number three, we need divine guidance for fulfillment. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. 
I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. This was a testimony of a man that enjoyed divine guidance from the Lord, Paul the Apostle. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have finished my assignment here on earth. It was fulfilled. Check through the record of the Bible. Every man that was being led by God was fulfilled. Abraham was guided by God, it was fulfilled. Isaac was guided by God, it was fulfilled. Jacob was led by God, it was fulfilled. Joseph led by God, it was fulfilled. The prophets in the Bible, like Jeremiah, were led by God. Isaiah, led by God. Even Jesus Christ of Nazareth, led by God. Paul the Apostle, led by God, and was fulfilled. The ultimate of divine guidance is fulfillment. The ultimate of divine guidance is fulfillment in life. I said sometimes that the worst use of life, time and resources, is to labor so hard to get to the door, only to get there and discover that the ladder is leaning on the wrong wall. By that time, it will hurt so much to laugh and you'll be too old to cry. That is why we have so many elderly people, some of them beggars on the street, you wonder what they did with their life when they were young. Some of them, you see them at the motor parks begging for money. Some are regretting today because of the steps they took some years ago, particularly when they were young. But as for you, you will not regret. You will fulfill destiny in a grand style in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What else is in divine guidance? Why do I need divine guidance? Number four, for supernatural breakthrough. We saw in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3, how Cyrus was led by God, was guided by God into supernatural, enviable, sweatless breakthrough. He went before him, made every cooker play straight, converted the wealth of the Gentiles to him. He became great and fulfilled in life because he was guided by God. That is why we must value divine guidance. We must cherish divine guidance. We must embrace divine guidance. We must give it all that is take to secure divine guidance. Remember the testimony of one of us, a graduate, and the run his master degree selling Akara. And from that business, today is owner of two cars and a duplex. From selling Akara, beans cake, I'm sure you know it. When I had the testimony, I had to ask one of our pastors to check on that business and check on him. And when the pastor got there, he said, wow, that if you see that place very small, under a tent, but it's making waves. And he told me that the man is going places, that because now he, now he has branches in the bottom. At the time, myself, I had to go there to see by myself. Praise the Lord. I have to go there to see by myself. Selling Akara by the roadside. And now a millionaire. That must be by the leading of God. And there you are, master degree holder, teaching in nursery and primary school. Any 12,000, 15,000, 18,000. And you are there complaining. And you are there getting angry and keeping malice with people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wasting your energy and getting angry on things that are not necessary, that cannot impact on your life because somebody didn't greet you well. Instead of you to be angry with your state, be angry with the devil, be angry with your situation, and channel your energies towards things that will change your life supernaturally. You are busy keeping malice with somebody who is eating fried chicken in his house. Amen. 
and enjoy God. Sleeping and waking up or dying condition, you are still struggling with life. Please wake up. Cherish divine guidance. Give it all that it takes to secure it. There is supernatural breakthrough in divine guidance. But how do I assess divine guidance? Number one, you must believe that you can be guided by God. You must believe that you can be led by God. It is not only pastors that are entitled to divine guidance. Every child of God, every believer, as long as you are born again, you are entitled to it. You must believe that you can be led by God. Believe so. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. For those who are led by God, they are sons of God. So as long as you are born again, you are qualified to be led by God. So believe that you can be led. Believe that you can be guided by God. The reason why so many people don't pray and seek divine guidance is because they believe that God can't talk to them. They have never heard God on any matter before, so there is no point wasting their time praying for divine guidance because they already know the answer in their own mind. Please, I'd like you before the end of this month, pick a matter in your life that you must hear God. Pick a matter in your life that there must be a change of story. Pick a matter in your life that you know you need the direction, you need the guidance. Go to God in prayer. Engage all the teachings you have had on hearing from God. And then get, Lord, before the end of this month, I must hear you on this man. Lord, speak to me. Speak in the language that I understand. If it's dream, you understand, he can speak to you through dream. If it's vision and revelation, you understand, he can speak to you through vision and revelation. He can use any means. But the truth is, God is always speaking. If you are ready and willing to listen. Number two, desire to be guided by God. Desire it. Don't only believe, desire it. Task for it. Long for it. I saw a story in 1 Samuel chapter 22. If you read it from verse 11. But let's jump to verse 15. Very pathetic story of a man that won't seek divine guidance. Of a man who relies on his knowledge on his experience. And look at what he said in verse 15. He said, did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be far from me. So he was not ready to hear from God at all. He said, should I? Then begin to ask from God, be it far from me. I will not do it. I will never do it. Be it far from me. Let not the king input anything. Unto his servant, not to all the house of my father, for thy servant knew nothing of this less or more. The next verse. And the king said unto him, Thou shalt surely die. Abimelech, not only you, but you and your father's house, your entire family, thou shalt surely die because the man will not seek divine guidance. He ended his life in destruction. He ended his life in death. Not only him and his family. Please, can you take care of that fan, please? Take care of the fan. Praise the Lord. So he never desired to be led by God. The next verse, verse 17, we saw how he was destroyed, how he was killed, because he will never subscribe to divine guidance. So we must desire to be guided by God. And then number next, 
we must recognize that only God can guide us to our glorious future. I know the plan that I think towards you, of good and not of evil, to take you, to bring you to the expected end. I know the thought. I know the plan that I think towards you. So he knows your frame. He knows your future. Before you were born, in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 and verse 10, he said, remember, remember the former thing of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning. So he knows the end right from the beginning. There is a way that he might right from the beginning. But he knows that the end of that way is the way of destruction. So only God can guide us through our glorious destiny. Number next, create a serene environment. First Thessalonians chapter 4, and verse 11. Create a serene environment. It says, study to be quiet and do your own business. My prayer is that on every issue of concern, as you pray to God, you will receive supernatural answer in the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big clap offering and welcome to Turn Around Banquet Service. Banquet simply means take what you want and as much as you want. Take what you want and as much as you want. So whatever you want from the Lord in this service today is takeable. Therefore, every area of your life that you desire supernatural turnaround, you are returning home with that turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We serve a turnaround God. A God that turns things, a God that turns situations around supernaturally, Without the permission of any devil. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 31, at creation, we saw how the earth was formless, how the earth was shapeless, and then God stepped in. They turned around, God stepped in and changed that situation. So it does not matter how deplorable. How shapeless, how formless any aspect of your life is, the turnaround God of my Father, the God of this commission, will step in this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. But the question is what does it mean to experience supernatural turnaround? What does it mean to experience supernatural turnaround. Number one, it means to have a sudden, unplanned, undeserved, inexplainable, but undeniable change of levels. It means to have a sudden, unplanned, undeserved, inexplainable, but undeniable change of level. Change of level. Supernatural change of level. From a landlord, from a tenant to a landlord. I thought you were saying amen to that. Yeah. From a tenant, God will change your level to a landlord. Yeah. Not just a house owner. That's a difference between that. If you build your house and you are living in it, you are a house owner. You are not a landlord. A landlord is someone who has a property that is receiving either rent or lease from. You are people living in it. You are people using it. Either on lease or on rent. You are making money, income from that property. Then you are a landlord. In the name of Jesus Christ, whether you are a tenant or a house owner, my God will turn you to a landlord. Amen. Supernatural change, change of story. From seeking for job to employer of labor. I thought somebody say amen. amen. 
From poverty to prosperity. Amen. From lack to abundance. Amen. From sickness to health. Amen. From barrenness to joyful mother of children. Amen. From a beggar to a giver. Amen. From a beggar to a lender. Amen. From trekking to becoming car owners. Amen. From patronizing local market to international market. Amen. And that is what God will make out of everyone that desires such in the name of Jesus. Amen. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. It was sudden. It was not planned. It was unexpected. But suddenly, God made it happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, beginning from today, there shall be a sudden change of level and story for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, it means freedom from captivity. Psalm 126 verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, therefore in this turnaround banquet, whatsoever represents satanic captivity, affliction, oppression, over your life today, you are going free from it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number three, what does it mean? It means to have enviable and self-announcing testimony. To have enviable and self-announcing testimonies. Psalm 126 verse 2b. When the Lord turned against the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth quit with laughter, and our then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. Then said they among the hidden. So who told the hidden that God has done great things for them? They must have seen it. They must have seen it. A turnaround that made unbelievers to start to testify on your behalf. Come and let your amen be the loudest if you are there. A turnaround that will make unbelievers to want to serve your God. It's happening to you right now in the name of Jesus. Then say they among the hidden. The Lord has done great it. The Lord has done great it. The Lord has done great it. The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for them. And then to confirm it in verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us. Therefore, we are glad. In the name of Jesus Christ, a turn around that will make your mockers to come bowing before you is to you this week. A turn around that will make unbelievers to want to serve your God will happen to you this week. A turn around that will make unbelievers to come serving your God will happen to you this week. A turn around that will make them to ask, how are you doing it? It's happening to you beginning from today. Then say there among the hidden, the Lord has done. The Lord has done. We can see it. The Lord. No wonder the Bible says that it will come to pass that ten men will hold on to the skirt of it that is a winner. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. And say, We'll go with you. We'll go with you. We'll go with you. We'll go with you. Because we have heard that, Lord, that your God is good. We have heard that the Lord is with you. We will go with you also. Because we have seen the act of God in your life. Therefore, I pray for you. This week will not end until you have your self-announcing testimony. Self-announcing. 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 Praise the Lord. God will give you self-announcing testimony this week. It means, number four, to have a quantitative and qualitative blessing. There are two different things. Quantitative and qualitative. 
Either of the two is not good enough. It must be a qualitative one and a quantitative one. It is not enough to have one good car. Amen. Particularly if it's a very high technology car. The day you put your kid there to start it and the car refuse to start, you know that it is not enough. Yes, the car is good. Yes, the car is 35 million, 70 million, but it's no more than one. The day it breaks down, you may break down with the car. And it is not enough to have many cars that are not roadworthy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, when I was in Abuja, I was a man, he had a business, you know, very close to where I live. So I passed to the place every day to go to work. One day I counted the car that has the inscription of his company name. They are up to 10 or more for his business. But there is none of the cars that could be sold up to 80,000. Yes, the cars were plenty. But add everything together, you can't get one million from it. Praise the Lord. But by this turn around banquet service, the God of this commission will give you both quantitative and qualitative blessing. You will have blessing in quantity and in quality. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. God speaking to Abraham. He said, I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. That is qualitative blessing. I will bless thee. That is quality. You know why? Because the Bible says, every good gift and perfect gift comes from the Lord. So if God blesses you, you are rest assured, is a qualitative one. For whatsoever the Lord does shall be forever qualitative. But it did not stop there. He said, and I will make thee a blessing. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shall be a blessing. That is qualitative. Because you must have more than enough to think of being a blessing to other people. But God said, I will bless you, qualitative. I will make thee a blessing, quantitative. In the name of Jesus Christ, by this service of today, qualitative and quantitative order of blessing becomes the order of the day in your life. Amen. You will have blessings in quality and in quantity. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And very quickly, how do I provoke supernatural turnaround? Number one, engage the intervention of God's sent prophet to you. The intervention of prophet. God's sent prophet. I'm not talking about commercial prophets. I'm not talking about hungry prophets. I'm not talking about professional prophets that are always outside there to make you Everything they ask for money from you. To fast, they ask for money. To see vision, you must pay. To see them, you must pay. And they have never seen anything good around you and about you, yet you are still tied to the apron. I've had people coming to me and sharing horrible experiences they had either with prophet or with herbalist. And what they, what they went there for, they misled them. Because they are hungry. They are only looking for what to eat. They are commercial prophets. They are professional prophets. They are diabolical prophets. Some of them. That is why you must be careful. Who speaks to your life? You must be careful. Who prophesied to your life? They prophesied doom into people's life. 
And I told you, one of them told me, he said, anything we tell people, if they don't do something about it, that that thing will happen. If they can say it with their mouth, it will happen. So know that you had a problem before you went there. You went there to buy a problem for yourself. If you are still here under the sound of my voice, and you are still jumping from one fake prophet to another, from one harpalist to another, they consult oracles for you, and you are a Christian, and you are a worker in the church, I think you need to go to children's class or believer foundation school. Prepare concussion for you. And you are a PhD holder, MS holder. You now you sit to consume things that are not healthy for you. The substance, the content, you don't know. When you drink as if you are drinking shit, or urine, or fresh blood, and then you still sit down there. The one they give you every morning when you wake up, what to speak to it, you speak. The one they give you to cover yourself. That is not how to be guided. That is not how to do it. So take advantage of God's sent prophet over you part time. We saw an array of examples of men and women who enjoy supernatural turnaround by the intervention of prophets. The children of Israel were one of them. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. By a prophet, God brought them out of the land of Egypt of the land of suffering, and took them to their land flowing with milk and honey. We saw another one in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 19, verse 9 to 16. 1 Kings 17, 9 to 16. The widow of Seraphite and her son, how she was rescued from death, from lack and want. He said, this meal is remaining for me and my son to eat and die. Why must you eat and die when you can live by the intervention of God's prophet? And then the prophet stepped in, the story changed. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, we saw the sons of the prophet, the wife, one of the wives, the sons of the prophet, how she was rescued from death by the intervention of the prophet. What about the Sunamite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 8? how she was rescued from barrenness by the intervention of God's ordained prophet. We saw in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, the sons of the prophet, how they were rescued, how the lost ark was found by the intervention of the prophet. When the ark's head sank, that son of the prophet exclaimed and cried, say, alas, it was borrowed. 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 No one knew that the ass was borrowed when the ass was functioning well until it got lost. No one knew. You see, there are some kind of, you know, attack from the pit of hell that are calculated to put people into shape. When the ass was working very well, nobody knew until it got lost. And then the man had to voice out, it was borrowed. I'm not the owner. Please help me. Please bail me out. There are some attacks from the pit of hell that are meant to put people into shape. But I pray for you today, every attack from the devil that is calculated at putting you into shame today that shall be a supernatural turnaround for you. So never undermine the place of a prophet in your journey through life. Never undermine it. Never undermine it. Don't die in silence. You have an issue, you don't have to struggle alone. No. God sent us here for your change of story. Remember the testimony of that lady and the husband? Things were not working. And ever since, they said when they came to me that they have never gone to see any pastor on any issue. 
They believed they can do things by themselves. But they were wrong. God showed them the dream. Call me for your freedom. And which they did. In one week, both husband and wife got a job in one week. Don't die in silence. Don't die in silence. Embrace divine intervention of the prophets. I passed to a man in 2011 that was issued in his place of work. An aviation industry. He was assistant manager. A vacancy was open to become a manager. And there were two of them who are qualified. But by manipulation, they put the other person who is a lady there. So the man came to me, downcasted. Downcast. And I told him that God will show up for him. So I prayed for him. The following day, he went. And then another aviation industry invited him for a job interview. So he went. And he asked me, he said, when I get there, how much should I mention for my salary? He was earning 200000 where I was working before. So he said, what if they offer me 250000 I said, don't take the job. They don't need you. If it is 250000 stay where you are. But they were just coming in newly, so they need your experience. If it is less than 300000 don't pick the job. So the man went, they interviewed him, they asked him, how much would you like to earn? He told them, 300000 they just keep that question and move forward. There was no reference to it. So, two days later, they sent him his employment letter. And then it was 299,000 naira, though with meal allowance of 1,500, I think, every day. And the man called me and said, I've gotten the offer. Should I pick it? I said, why not? So he wrote them acceptance letter. However, he noted that the name was his own. The address was not his address. So he pointed it to them that, well, I've accepted your offer, but this name is mine, this address isn't mine. So they corrected it and sent it back to him. Lo and behold, it was 400,000. Praise the Lord. Now, by the time he brought the appointment letter to me on Sunday that week, it has grown from 400,000 to 500,000. If you are clapping for Jesus, make it bigger. That is how God will keep turning things around in your favor. Can you see that turn around? And he was entitled to official accommodation. And meanwhile, I just dedicated this duplex for him. So when they told him of the official accommodation, he told them no, that uh, he lived in his own house and is comfortable. He just dedicated to her, wouldn't you like to live there? And the company rented his house for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Clap if you are clapping. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So he became a house owner and a Landlord and tenant in his own house. The company rented his house for him and was paying him house rent in his own house. Therefore, this order of supernatural turnaround becomes the portion of everyone that desires it. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. 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 What more? Make serving God your priority for living. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all other things shall be added unto you. Number three, keep loving God. And continue to prove that you do by loving what God loves most. Which is the redemption of lost souls. When operation come and see, engage. Engage with all of your heart. Going after lost souls. Engage with all of your heart. Pray kingdom and blessing prayer. Every day, in the morning, in the evening. Wherever you are found, 
In case you are not privileged to gather with us in the morning and evening, in your place of work, on your way to work, you engage in kingdom advancement endeavors, praying for lost souls, their salvation and establishment in faith. What more? If you desire financial turnaround, get committed to covenant practice as a lifestyle. Pay your tithe, pay your offering, so as to experience financial turn around. And of course, to enjoy turn around in your head, keep feeding on the word of God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, or 2 to 22. Today, the God of this commission will turn your life around supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'd like you to rise on your feet, wave your hands to God in heaven, and give him thanks because today is as he has turned your situation around supernaturally. Give him thanks because today you are returning home with a supernatural change of level, a supernatural change of story in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give him praise is worthy, celebrate him is worthy, thank him is worthy in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your louder, amen. amen. Save me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Turn every satanic captivity around in my life, my business, my career, my finance, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voices in one minute and pray. Lord, whatever represents satanic captivity in my head, in my life, my business, my career, turn it around on this mountain today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every unwanted situation in my life, Lord, turn it around. Lord, turn it around. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Turn around satanic captivity, demonic captivity in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Take all the glory forever in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Give me a job, a position, a promotion, a contract, an appointment, a blessing, a breakthrough that will turn my captivity around forever. Lift up your voices and pray that prayer. Lord, by this anointing today, by this anointing today, give me a blessing, give me a contract, give me a breakthrough, give me an appointment, a promotion, a position, a job that will turn around supernaturally my captivity. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Lord, I desire a turnaround, a job, a promotion, an appointment, a blessing that will turn my captivity around supernaturally, that will turn everything around for my good, that will turn my captivity around and forever, eternally, forever, in the name of Jesus. Lord, this week, this week as I set out, Give me a job. Give me a contract. Give me a breakthrough. Give me a promotion. Give me an appointment. A, meal, a blessing that will turn around my captivity forever by this anointing. Today, by this anointing. Today, by this anointing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Turn my life around for good. By this anointing today. Rate Rodo Zelia Galaba. Thank you, Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we are praying. Whatever situation that is contrary to you. Today, by this anointing, I decree supernatural turnaround for you. Yeah. Everyone called barren under the sound of my voice. Today, by this anointing, become joyful mother of children. Yeah. 
Lift up your bottles of anointing oil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone called jobless. By this anointing this week, you are banging your miracle job in the name of Jesus. Every business that is crawling, every business that is not moving, by this anointing, this week, I decree speed in your business. I decree turn around in your business. I decree bread to your business. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every market that is not selling, in the name of Jesus Christ, by this anointing beginning from today, there shall be no more bad market. Every good that has overstayed in your store this week, buyers will come and clear them. Desperate buyers will come and clear them. Somebody was in my office last Sunday. Sunday before, she told me that she has talked in her shop that has not sold for a very long time, maybe since last year. They were new, and now it is told to is Akube. Is it Akube? Akube. Akube. I've never heard it before. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I've never heard Akube before. Is it the thing that has turned to Akube? You know the meaning of Akube? You know Akube? Okay, me, I don't know Akube. Akube. Is it has turned to Akube in our shop? And a, by chance, I was just passing, I was on outreach. And I was passing the store, and I played like a joke. I just told those goodbye, 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 goodbye. The security around were there. They were looking at me and laughing. I said, goodbye, goodbye. It is done. In Jesus' name. Last Sunday, the woman came and knelt down. He said, the kind of says that I saw, I've never seen it, not even in festive period. Not even in festive, during festive period. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every good that has overstayed your store, I decree this week desperate buyers will come and clear them. Every career that is stagnated by this anointing be opened. Whatever is not working around you begin to work. That's your car that is giving you issue. But as you anoint the car with this anointing oil, I decree every issue of concern on that car is over. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That foul spirit devouring your peace, devouring your head, devouring your finance. By this anointing, vengeance and judgment come upon it. Amen. Every devil that is after your life, that has kept your life miserable, that has kept you struggling, that has kept you walking and nothing is working. By this anointing, I decree liberty for you. Amen. And judgment for them. Amen. Liberty for you. Amen. 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 Judgment for them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. As this anointing comes upon you, I decree supernatural turn around your heads. Whatever is buying and selling your body is cursed right now. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now before you anoint yourself, all heads bowed and all eyes closed. If you are here, you are not born again. You have not given your life to Christ. You have not surrendered your life to Christ at any time. Or maybe you did, but along the line that was a disconnect and you want to reconnect to God. This anointing will not work for you until you surrender your life to Christ. Until you surrender your life to Christ, it won't work for you. What a day to enjoy a supernatural turnaround as you surrender your life to Christ who hearted you. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. You are here, you have not surrendered your life to Christ. All you did, that was a disconnect. I want to say, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I rededicate my life to you. I'll be anointing you by myself. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. And on the third day you rose again, that I might be justified. Right now I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I am saved. I am restored. I'm born again. I'm free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. 
Hey, bring me. Hey, bring me. Hey, bring me. Hey, bring me. Hey, bring me. Hey, bring me. Hey, bring me.